live from the mist and shrouded mountaintop fortress that is X and Y Communications Headquarters. You're listening to the world famous Mountaintop Podcast. And now, here's your host, Scott McKay. All right, everyone. This is your boy, Scott McKay, coming at you again with another episode of the Mountaintop Podcast. Today, we're going to have a rather interesting conversation to say the least. And I know that's going to be pretty much a given because my guest is one of the most effervescent women you're ever going to want to meet. Her name is Jessica J and you probably know her from Playboy Radio on Sirius XM. Jessica, how's it going? It's going awesome, Scott. Thanks for having me. How's your effervescence doing this morning? You know what? I've never been called effervescent, and I definitely tingled a little when you said that. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's kind of like bubbly, only more sophisticated and intelligent. Oh, my God. Stop. You're making me blush. I'm about to write that down somewhere. I am effervescent. Well, blush can be effervescent. <laughs> it could be. I think it becomes pink champagne at that point, although champagne right? only comes from champagne. Well, I'm Filipino. I don't turn pink champagne. I turn like a weird maroon. So, <laughs> what a maroon! That's different than being effervescent. <laughs> a little different. A little. Remember those Bugs Bunny cartoons where they called everybody a maroon all the time? Did they? Why don't yeah. I remember this? I feel left out. You're too of young. My childhood. I feel left out of my childhood, basically. Well, no, they don't ever show Warner Brothers cartoons anymore because they're all horribly politically incorrect. Oh God, you're so right. And I, I was obsessed yeah. with them growing up. I really was. I promise you. Like, let's just put it this way. I mean, Pepe Le Pew is basically rape culture personified. No, <laughs> but he was so cute. Like, it's <laughs> I'm only, it's only now that you're saying this that it's actually dawning on me. I just thought he was like so charming. Well, I just don't know what a maroon is. I guess it's kind of like you know, like it's a Jessica. We yeah. call her effervescent. How about that? Oh, no, maroon is a negative though. Maroon is like moron. It is. A an Italian, yeah. something made famous by the Sopranos or something. Oh. Maron, Maron, right? Maron, yeah. that's yeah, it. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Okay, so anyway, here we are. Now that we know. Right, the more you know, right? <laughs> the reason why your effervescence is so important to this conversation is one of the reasons why we're having you here. One of the other reasons is you just cannot be offended. I mean, hell, you think Pepe Le Pew's cute. This is, I did. <laughs> this is an affront to the entire feminism movement with a capital F. Okay. I was just going to say feminists growing up hated me. They thought I was like all the girls, all the feminists like in my high school and college thought I was just like an abomination to like the female roar. Wow. And so why is that? I don't know. I was like, I don't understand why it's such a problem for feminism if I want to go streaking. Like, what's the problem, ladies? I used to totally go streaking when I was a kid. Matter of fact, Did I had really? four or five friends of mine. I don't know. <laughs> what our problems were but we'd wait till like one or two in the morning and we'd ditch our clothes and this is like in the summertime in maryland we'd have only our oh, sneakers on oh, man. and we always were trying to see how far away we could get from our clothes successfully that's amazing i feel like you and i could have been streaking buddies scott well, no here's the here's the amazing <laughs> serendipity of this whole thing okay yeah we always no. dreamt we would meet a little group of four or five hot girls who were streaking <laughs> at the same time as us Oh my God, Scott, that's how me and my girlfriends felt. I know. Oh, your friends could have gotten with my friends. It would have been a big streaking party. To mayhem. See how we got yeah. from our clothes. It would have been mayhem. It would have oh, been beautiful. And we had a wonderful public swimming pool that was fun to break into in the middle of the night, too. Oh my God, you bad boys. Bad ass boys. The problem was we weren't bad enough. We were all talking, no action. I, mean, I don't know. That's a lot of action. Naked swimming, naked running at 1 a.m. Don't sell, don't sell yourself short, Scott. That's that's action. Well, actually, unfortunately, your friends were probably in a completely different time zone, so that would have been a long way to run. That's true. We could have cried. We'll always have streaking. You know, I got to come clean with these guys right now. This is Go the second it. take you and I are doing this show because the first one got messed up because of sound issues. Oh, no, you're telling them. <laughs> Holy hell, this show is already 50 times better than the first take. Oh, my God, that makes me so happy. <laughs> Let's break down exactly okay. what we just done here because it's kind of relevant in an irrelevant sort of way. It is. <laughs> because the, It is. And I'm glad you said that. Because this show is about how not to bore women to tears. Yes. And we just had a very interesting conversation together. We barely know each other. Hell, we're not even on a first date. And it seemed almost we're not effortless. We're standing in front of each other. Exactly. Right. You know, especially because we're not standing in front of each other. Ask any yeah. guy who's ever just glibly started a phone sex conversation with a woman he barely knows over the phone. That would have never happened if she was actually right? standing in front. Yeah. If you uh, just ask any guy about that, it's often easier to do this over the phone. But 
what I'm saying is you're interesting enough of a person that you brought up something totally out of the blue and particularly fun to talk about. And what did I do? I had a way to relate to it. Yeah. And next thing I did you not know, bring it out of the blue. You said I'm never offended and you said something about feminists. So I was very consistent, Scott. Right. Well, you know, I had to be a little vulnerable to do that, especially if I don't know. You. That. I right. dig it. I think people who are offended easily in general suck. And, <sighs> and yet, okay. And yet. In terms of this whole idea that we're building this show around of not boring women to tears, right. guys walk on eggshells trying not to offend women because they're afraid of this you know, backlash of, oh, oh yeah. my gosh, you're the worst guy in the world and all you guys belong in jail and you're all rapists just because, you know, he said, you know, I, I think you have nice lips and I'd like to kiss you. So they're just being ultra uber careful when they've never Horrified met a woman before. Offend. Right. Horrified. Meanwhile, the women are like, what, Jessica? They're like, what's wrong with this guy? Why doesn't he say anything? Why won't he talk to me? Why won't? Yeah, exactly. I actually just wrote about that. Like plenty of women are sitting there fantasizing about men coming up to them and talking to them. It's just that a lot of guys, you know, like you brought up earlier, a lot of guys can be boring or they'll they'll say something that makes us really feel put off. Like we want you to make us feel the way me and Scott hopefully made you feel when we were talking about our streaking. Yeah, I mean, and it's not getting any better. Everything is offensive. Men are more offensive than ever. You would think all women are easily offended and are just absolutely dead sick of men. I get emails almost on a you daily think. basis. Yeah. I mean, I get emails almost on a daily basis. Come on, Scott. Women like sex. Hell, women don't even like when you say hello to them. Oh, yeah. no. That makes me sad that anybody would say that. <sighs> it's pandemic. So. Yeah. Meanwhile, guys are going out on dates and then the woman's going, well, you know, you seem like a really nice guy, but mm, I think we should just be friends. And he's yeah. like, well, what did I do? I was a perfect gentleman. I didn't bring up anything interesting. Right. I like, didn't I'm not bring supposed up anything to. offensive. <laughs> right. right. They're, like you said, they're walking on eggshells. They're just trying to not do something wrong. But well, that's okay. not doing it right. Well, all right. Come on. Let's just throw this down. All right. Guys, anyone who's offended, I don't care if it's you or a woman, they suck. You don't want to be on a date with them anyway. Why are we trying not to offend women who we don't even want to be with anyway? It's because she probably has a nice ass and you're she just making does. sure you don't offend her because you don't want to lose her before you even have her. Because you want that nice ass. Right. Because you're Mr. Nice Guy and you're walking on eggshells. It's boring. Right. It is. Right. So what about taking that vulnerable risk? You know, I like that you said vulnerable because – I don't know any man that doesn't cringe when he hears that word, <laughs> vulnerable. Like it's something your therapist throws at you after like you finally realize that you're mad at your father. Am I right? So the the idea of becoming vulnerable to me can be something as simple as telling her what you think right now, telling her what you feel right now. Maybe you're colder than usual because you forgot your jacket at home because you spilled ketchup on it yesterday. I mean, something as simple as that is vulnerability, like giving her an inside glimpse of what it's like to be you for a hot second. That's all it is. Well, I think vulnerable is a word that's tricky to use because it vulnerable is. can connote weakness. Like, you know, yeah. they can just beat you down because you have no strength whatsoever. Or right. Vulnerability, especially in the sense that women use it when referring to hot guys, is actually something strong. It's I'm willing to take the risk of rejection to come talk to you and meet mm -hmm. you and get your number, for example. See, now, the reason why most men won't do that is because they're vulnerable when they do that. But it takes courage to offer up that vulnerability and take that risk. So right. being a vulnerable man in a way that's actually masculine and sexy, frankly, is being willing to risk loss for the sake of gain, right. which puts you in a position, hey, you know, maybe this might be a disaster. Anybody who's ever gone base jumping understands they're being vulnerable when they do that. But that's what makes base jumpers badass at the same time is they're willing to take that risk. So I wanted to go ahead and make that clear for everybody. And by the way, in my next program, we're going to break that whole concept down and make you bulletproof with it which is awesome. You know what? As you're saying this, I'm having a visual. Um, I when, when I was in grad school, I learned that – not grad school, regular school actually. I learned that when mice feel like impending attack, 
they will literally tuck their balls like inside themselves to, you know, keep themselves safe. And to me, when I hear vulnerable, I hear susceptible to pain. Um, and a lot of guys, when it comes to being vulnerable, they think, okay, I have to hand her my balls. <laughs> I'm going to hand her my balls and I'm going to hope that she doesn't squash them in between her, you know, manicured fingers. But kind of like what you said is being masculine with your vulnerability. I think at the mice that literally like still own their balls, they don't put them out there to get crushed. They literally like hold them. Wow. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Probably because they're afraid of all the female vaginal iron, you know, bear trap. <laughs> no, that's not, that, that's an awful visual now. <laughs> kind of a Pink Floydian kind of thing. <laughs> right? But I think the difference, really, I think the difference yeah. is basically, you know, there's weak vulnerability and there's, you know, there's empowering vulnerability. Empowering in the sense that, you know, I know that I can do this and open up and that I'm going to be okay if I open up and, you know, it doesn't go my way versus I'm going to open up and it's going to fucking kill me. So I'm going to hope and pray that that doesn't happen. Well, I think where guys mess up is they think that the vulnerability they're putting out there is the weak kind. Like she's going to yeah. crush me like a grape because these women just love to reject men when in right. reality – if they can kind of reframe their vulnerability as strength, as we're talking about, women are going to be like, oh, my God, he's so sexy. Meanwhile, a guy who's left in the lurch with this whole concept is thinking like, what did that guy do that I didn't? Yeah. I mean, why is he different? Why does he get her and I don't? It's because of that self-image relative to vulnerability. I think right. we're onto something here. I think so, too. And here, here I thought we were just going to talk about don't be fucking boring. <laughs> well, listen, the guy who is afraid yes. is boring. Yeah. Fear is not exciting, sexy, fun, or interesting. It's not. It's holding back. To me, when I think of men who are afraid, I have this visual of men literally holding their arms out. What do you call it in football? It's called like the one arm or the stiff called? arm. <laughs> the stiff arm. Yeah. When I think of men who are afraid, I mean, you don't have to, you know, look afraid. Afraid can be like the guy who's like talking himself up so much that he doesn't realize that he hasn't asked her a damn question. That's that's a little afraid. I think of men who are stiff arming women in conversation. God bless Jessica J. Uh, stiff God arm. You, Scott McKay. <laughs> stiff arm isn't even in your vocabulary. It's not, but you brought it into my vocabulary, so thank you for enriching my life. That's just so precious and adorable of you, really. Okay, so here we go. We're coming up with these wonderful ways that guys can change their lives right now to be less boring, and these are completely off the chart. These are not on the radar screen for this conversation. I love this. I think this is a great episode already. But let's talk about some practical elements of this, okay? We've got some deep philosophical shit behind us now. We so, did. Yeah, really. We got real as fuck, Scott. I mean, Mariska Hargitay. It's unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> you ever seen The Love Guru with Mike Myers? I have, sadly. They yes. Very <laughs> it's actually, I, didn't, I, I put off seeing that movie for years for obvious reasons. I can't believe you did. That's oh. like me with Spring Break. Or Spring Breakers. I put it off for a long time. And then I was like, I got to see what all these men are talking about. Yeah, right. And I, <clears throat> I regret it. It's the one regret I have in my life is watching that movie. Right. Well, you know, the, if you've ever seen that movie, it's <laughs> kind of a weird deal between him being a complete total fraud and being a total genius in the same person for the whole movie. Right. And what he does is he always kind of, instead of saying namaste to people when he, you know, gives the namaste sign, he says Mariska Hargitay, who, of course, is like a B-list actress here in the United States. Right. Yeah. <laughs> It's just funny to me. So that was like our little Mariska Hargitay speech on vulnerability and not being boring. But now cute. back to earth because this back is a – Back to earth to get real This and is practical. a pragmatic – yes, this is a pragmatic show. We are you yeah. know, very much real world around here. We're so real, Scott. <laughs> you got it as real as it gets right now. We're so streaking real. together. It's getting it's, – It got it's pretty real, real, guys. I hope you feel that already. Yeah. All right. So what we have here is a failure to communicate. On first mm. dates. Uh huh. And it's boring because guys are sitting there saying to themselves, All right, well, I've gone out with this woman. She's agreed to go out with me. Here we are. Right. Maybe we've done the god awful dinner and a movie thing, which of course, you know, stacks the deck against you to begin with. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And there's nothing to say. And guys nothing. are worried about running out of things to say. And sometimes right. it's for damn good reason because they don't have anything to say. Right. So, how can we prevent being boring? And instead of not messing up, putting our foot in our mouth, shooting said foot and ruining our chances and fearing loss and being needy and what all these, whatever all these bad things are that we're trying to avoid. They all sound so bad. 
I know, right? What are some good solid strategies for, you know, getting the conversation moving and helping this woman loosen up and enjoy her time with you? Because that's really what it's all about. If she's having a good time, she's not bored, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? I I actually just wrote about it, Scott. And I only have one thing men need to do in order to not be boring. You have to ask me what it is. I'm I'm laughing because of Um, of just what it brought to mind. Okay, there's just one thing. One thing. Well. But before I say that one thing. Well, don't make me wait, as a woman once famously said to me. In the heat of the well, moment. I will not, and I will I will come at you right now. So first, let me come give you an me, explanation. Sis. I call it the Uber driver explanation because every Uber driver asks me this question: What can I do to just have better conversations with women? It's really oh, is that what happens every time you get into an Uber? It's kind of like yeah, the, yeah. that reminds me of the commercial with George Foreman. People come up to me all the time and say, "George, how can I get my invention found out and bought by?" Did they really say that to George Foreman though? Like, nobody's coming up to George Foreman asking him that, right? Nobody's saying that to George Foreman. But exactly. every time I'm in an Uber and every I time. tell people what I do, yep. they always ask, "Well, how can I become better with women?" Like, how well, that can was I your first mistake women? right there. What? Telling everybody what you do. People ask, you know what? At this point in my life, I say I run, I, I'm self-employed. Like that's right. I, when I used to say therapist, Scott, you won't believe. Yeah, they would run, run that. away. Yeah. Oh right. yeah. People, no, people would open up to me about the worst stuff when I said I was a therapist. So yeah, same I mean, thing with, you know, I'm a sex and dating and relationship coach. Now I'm just like, uh-huh. I'm self-employed. <laughs> right. I'm in marketing. I, I'm I in give marketing. them the image of a cubicle. Right. I don't do anything interesting, I promise. But anyway, so basically what I say to them is, and I'm going to pose a question to you, Scott, and everybody listening. What is the number one thing that we all have in common? Other than ourselves, I can't answer that question. The human condition. That That's the answer. Human condition. We all got here the same way. We're all leaving the same way. Am I right? Isn't that fascinating? And there's seven and a half billion of us wrestling with that at the same time. If there's anything to make you really like get real when it comes to talking to women and being too nervous, you have to understand that we are the same goddamn species. There's we're we're no better or worse than anybody else or we we're always going to be, you know? Just as long as you don't traipse into the DMZ of death and religion on that first date conversation, I think you're doing fine so far. Yeah, exactly. You could talk about and that actually, hold on, I'm I'm going to get into that. So, okay, the number oh, one I'm thing. I'm excited already. <laughs> right? We're going to talk about death and religion here on today's podcast. Guys, but, as an aside, never talk about anything dark on a first date. Please don't you'll, be dark. You'll be creepy, not just boring. Never mention your mother on a first date, ever. Oh, my God. All right. I have so many anecdotes about that, but that's when I was dating as a therapist. Which I didn't we mean to derail you. you. <laughs> we won't even get into right now. But, okay, so the number one thing we all have in common, human experience. Am I right? You're right. Human experience. We all have thoughts. We all have feelings. We all have bodies one way or another. Um, Okay. So now what's the one thing, the number one thing that we are all interested in as human beings? Del Carnegie says yourself. Yes, that's correct. And it's funny. Well, now that y'all know that this is mine and Scott's second run, Scott's answer was sex last time. But the is. Which I still stand behind, but I'm making it easier on my guests, especially since you're a damn sex therapist. That was a softball last time. It was. But every man always responds with sex. It's really it's really cute. I love it. But no, you're right. The number one thing we're all interested in, first and foremost, is ourselves. So the opposite of boring is interesting. Am I right? That's absolutely true. How do you be interesting to a woman that you had almost know nothing about? She knows almost nothing about you. You connect on your human experience. Because mm-hmm. if she can relate to what you're saying about your human experience, guess what? She could put herself in your shoes. And if she puts herself in your shoes, the conversation inadvertently becomes about her. And if it becomes about her, she becomes interested. So the ninja move you're performing here before our very eyes is to be vulnerable about some part of your own human experience in a way that based on what you know about her is probably going to be instantly relatable to her, interesting and exciting and intriguing to her. And she'll jump all over it. Well, here's the thing, Scott, you don't even know, you you don't need to know anything about her. That's the beauty of it. You don't need to know what she's interested in, what she likes. You don't even have to be face to face. Uh, All you need to know is your own human experience and then relate it to her in a in a method that I call PRS plus hey. 
So as long as you give your personal relevant experience in the moment and then relay it back to her, she will feel that connection. She will feel that that comfort from, oh, this person's like me, and she will feel interested automatically. PRS, I'm assuming, does not stand for Paul Reed Smith for all you. No, but well, there. you're good. <laughs> I, that's a, I just threw a bone to all my guitar playing buddies out there. That's cute. I dig it. Yeah. No, it stands for personal relevant statement. Personal meaning something pertaining to you, relevant pertaining to right here, right now. And statement, uh, that statement, that's it. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's all I got for S. So Come on, me, damn it. You know what a statement is. Do I have to explain I this? What a statement is, guys. <laughs> and if you don't, this is the wrong podcast for you. It's not relevant to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I have to explain statement, then English language is not relevant to you. So exactly. it's not going to be very personal anyway. So you might as well just right. click off. Yeah. So for instance, I will do a PRS plus hey right now to you, Scott. Right now, I'm sitting here in front of a big black microphone, which every time one of my girlfriends sees it, they ask if it's a dildo. So I don't know if you ever have this problem with your microphone. No, because I'm not really in the dildo market. Okay, see there. I didn't even – all I did was say something personal and relevant to me yeah. right now. I threw it to you. How fast did you – or how long did you need to take to think about your response? Longer than you thought I did. I'm just pretty quick on my feet. Actually, I only have one girlfriend that ever comes into this office, and she absolutely knows that I don't need a dildo. So <laughs> there's See, never any still, confusion. Scott, you're still talking about your experience. But what happens basically for the guys listening, what happens is the second you describe what's going on for you in your head, in your body, in the moment, she starts to picture it in herself. And the second you throw the ball to her, she already has an idea of how to respond. She already feels inclined to respond because the conversation is already about her. But I wouldn't make it about dildos. Why not? I would definitely talk about dildos, death, and streaking, guys. <laughs> well, streaking is probably fair game. <laughs> fair game. No, so basically... As an opening response, if that's what's going on for you, fine. Um, but I doubt you're going to have the same exact personal relevant experience that I had just now that I had with Scott. Well, in all fairness, let's backtrack a little bit because I let's joked backtrack. about not talking about dildos, which of course right. was a joke. I think a skill that every guy should acquire, and this will follow very closely on the heels of getting over yourself and stop fearing loss right? and stop thinking, you know, oh my God, I can't lose her and I can't offend her. Once we get over ourselves and try not to offend people, and we assume correctly that people who get offended so easily suck anyway, and we don't even want to date them, right. what happens is we start giving ourselves permission for the date not to go well, which is unheard of for a guy who doesn't have any options, mm. okay? So that in and of itself is going to make you more interesting because then you will, in turn, take more vulnerable risks in the best way possible. And you'll go ahead and bring up things. You'll you'll take a risk and you'll bring up things that may or may not go well. They may be a little risque. They may be streaking or even, dare I say it, dildos, because you sense that this woman could handle that conversation, think it's funny and interesting, and because you're already connecting. But a guy who's afraid of offending a woman because he's afraid of losing her and therefore doesn't risk, therefore becomes boring. One thing about mentioning streaking when you were 15 years old on a date is it is not going to be boring. It's not going to be not intriguing, but it could theoretically be offensive or, you know, rapey or you're trying to get your hands in my pants to a woman who's, well, got problems socially. <laughs> right. Are you willing to risk that or not? Especially if, you know, damn it, she started it. She had this perky little attitude and started, you know, being a little flirty with you. Yeah. Or right. even how about this? Even if you put it out there. And you're okay with putting it out there. And she's like, oh, my God, that's, like, really offensive. Do you even want to see that girl anymore? Like, get get your own filter process down because she might not be a girl that you want to hang with ever again. Now, I tell you, all you guys, if you're living somewhere where every woman is offended by something like that, y'all get down to Texas. Because <laughs> Texas women are just amazing. I mean, they just love to talk about the most upfront things. And, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, every woman down here dresses like it. Well, not every woman. I'm stereotyping. But a lot of women down here kind of fancy themselves as, you know, country music star women. So, you know, they can bait their own hook and they can man the grill while you go in and get another beer and stuff like that. Hell, they can shoot whiskey with you. These women are great down here. They yeah. sound great. Women in Los Angeles are offended by everything. But that's because in L.A. they tell us that we have to be offended or we're not evolved. <laughs> so you're not evolved and empowered if you're not offended. It's just it's exhausting, Scott. Well, hell, the, the Calexit movement is a thing. 
They mm. want out of the United States, for God's sake. They're so yeah, tired. we do. They really do. Yeah. Good grief. I don't even want to go down that trail. Let's that's not ne- go down there. <laughs> that's neither interesting nor exciting nor intriguing. No, that is nothing about what we're talking to you guys about is what it is. Okay, so in the interest of time, it's all about making conversation that you connect with and you start with something that she's going to be able to relate to. Talk about something that's going to be interesting to her. Right. What if the conversation starts to lull on you and you start feeling that little twinge of, oh my gosh, fear or panic? What do you do? How do you bring it back around? You know, I usually say when we run out of things to say in conversation is because we're pulling from either an external resource, we're burning ourselves out and over talking about ourselves, or we're burning her out and over talking about her. So what needs to happen is you need to create that momentum of having a solid connection again. Because I'm sure you've been in situations where the conversation kind of lulls to the point where you realize, like, well, I guess I ran out of things to say. Usually you ran out of things to say because you're talking about something that you don't, that you, you've used all your knowledge. Like, here I am in my office, and I could talk to you about a finite amount of office supplies. You know what I mean? And I will eventually run out of things to say. But unless I'm talking to you about my experience and my thoughts and like exactly what's going on, I'll never run out of things to say. And you guys will never run out of things to say if you constantly pull into your own resources about, okay, what's my experience? What are my thoughts? What are my feelings? What have I done in my life? What do I think about this? And constantly engage her into that conversation. Yes, it does. But how about this? How about if I'm self-assured enough as a real man to be okay with running out of words? What about if the silence happens and, you know, I'm okay with it? I love that you asked that because I had a guy write into me the other day and he's like, how do I never run out of things to say? And he was like, I can't stand when there's silences. I get really nervous. And I, I said, you know, what if you let the silence be like that's tension, that's sexual tension, because as men and women, we're supposed to progress towards progressing our genitals together. Basically, realistically, uh, we're wired for it. So what you're feeling is sexual tension building up if you can let it be there. So if you, Scott, if you and me are in conversation and, you know, you let the conversation die, I like that you said it, you're a self-assured man who's okay with silence. You're okay with not filling the space. I will feel that tension. And if I start the conversation back up, guess what? Now I'm the one engaging you. And that is not a bad thing, guys. No. And also the whole idea of feeling like women are playing keep away from us with their genitals is making us all the more boring Uh or else you become a men going their own way, a MIG toe guy. And you're thinking, well, I'm not even going to bother because these women hate men anyway. They don't want sex. And even if I do have sex with them, they're going to cry rape. I'll end up in jail and it'll get really depressing. You know, they've already. (laughs) What a thought process, Scott. I know. Horrible, right? Oh my God. (laughs) Meanwhile, these women are everywhere going, hey, Scott, where did all the real men go? I just want somebody to come have sex with me. And they all never really even want to kiss me. What's wrong with these guys? You know, right. Where did all the cowboys go, Scott? Where did all the cowboys? Where's my John Wayne? Damn it. (laughs) So, okay, let's say we do well on this first date. Now we start a relationship. How do we not fall into this rut of just Netflixing and chilling from the second date until our 50th anniversary? That's a rut these guys get into. How can we avoid that early on and and set a nice precedent instead? You know what? Um, One of the things... I get a lot is I'm in this rut now, you know, in fact, one guy wrote in, he was like, you know, I'm in this rut. And she told me it's because I don't date her anymore, or I don't do anything different anymore. And I don't understand I got married. So I didn't have to date anymore. And I think that's a big problem that a lot of people in general have in regards to getting comfortable in relationships. They think, okay, I can be myself, I can let loose, I cannot try anymore, I cannot do anything anymore, I don't have to. Um, But realistically, that that Part of the fun is getting to know each other and exploring different things about each other. You know, your day, granted, I don't care how monotonous and predictable your day is, it's still different than yesterday. So as long as you can be curious and share, you know, share yourself continuously and connect with her and be curious about her and date her, you're going to be able to prevent that rut or soften the blow. I mean, it's just something that happens the more comfortable we get with each other. You know what I mean? You don't have to talk anymore. So many, like, that's a beautiful thing about relationships that a lot of people don't understand is that it's really nice when you don't have to fucking talk to each other anymore because you do get to know each other so well. 
But it's always important to constantly re-engage, connect, and be curious. Well, absolutely. Because unfortunately, I think a lot of people out there are lonely and they see the whole dating, the whole courtship process, if you want to refer to it as such as a means towards an end and the end yeah. is killing the loneliness. And so now that we've walked down the aisle, we've had a big fancy wedding. I can just breathe and relax and never do a damn thing ever again in my time. Yeah. Life. Never do a damn thing ever again. That which sucks. Is why are, yeah. But which is why people feel so let down by the institution of marriage. They see it as this idea of this is going to save me. This is going to make me happy for the rest of my freaking life. And that's just, that's not the reality of it. Marriage itself doesn't make you happy for the rest of your life. You do. And, you know, being an active participant in it is what does it. I'm going to offer two quick bullet points to go along yeah. with never stop dating, which is what you were just talking about. Right. You know, and, and relaxing and realizing this is good that you don't have to be in this kind of pressure cooker of dating anymore. You can just enjoy each other's company. The two bullet points I want to add are, first of all, if you're in a relationship with your best friend, then, you know, this is built in. You will enjoy each other's company. You won't bore each other because, you know, you're kind of sort of in a way, the way I've been talking about it lately is you're sort of living in each other's minds a little. You don't have to wonder yeah, yeah. what's going on over there. The second thing is don't buy into this meme that once you're married, you're buried. You have a ball and chain and, you know, your wife is your old lady. I mean, you know, that's self-fulfilling prophecies. Calling that out becomes true. I really like that. My wife and I have been on more adventures and cross more items off our bucket list since we've been together than in all the years combined before we met each other. Oh, that sounds awesome. That really is awesome. And it wasn't that hard. It was just a mindset. And now we take our kids with us. But people think, oh, well, you know, now I've got bills and mortgage and taxes and all kinds of complicated things. And now we're just going to have to kind of muddle through life together and be boring together. A nonsense. You don't have to do that. Now, last thing here. Since you're a sex coach, how yeah. can guys not be boring in the bedroom? What is it, first of all, that makes a man boring in the bedroom? And by God, how can we avoid that? You know, there's two types of boring in the bedroom. There's the boring that is completely disconnected, um, not in the moment. And there's the boring that is hyper-focused. I mean, they're kind of the same thing. There's There's the boring that is... I said it earlier, monotonous and predictable. Right. I mean, you know, I love, I, I've been in relationships, I've been in great relationships where we've had great sex in the beginning and we've had, you know, the same kind of sex throughout, but it's gotten boring because I knew what to expect. Um, so in regards to the guy, in regards to the guys who are just starting to have sex with this girl, you know, they're in the honeymoon phase or, you know, they're just starting to have sex. Um, you have to be in the moment. And you and I actually talked about this last time is there's so many, I think you called it like, you know, women do it with Cosmo. Um, I'm noticing nowadays that men are so, okay, I have to do it right. I have to do it right. Cause men have this pressure to fuck her right because women might fake it or they might, she might complain to her girlfriends or you never really know. So men have this, you know, idea of I have to do it right. But what happens is y'all dudes, you get in your heads like, okay, I gotta, I gotta, lick her pussy like this and touch her like that. And then I'm going to flip her over like this. And we can see that you are running through this list of things in your head. We're right there looking at you. And that to me is very boring because I don't feel connected. And that's what sex is. It takes two people to have sex. And if you're thinking about a list of things instead of, you know, how great my pussy feels in your mouth, I'm going to feel really bored thinking about your list of things too. Or else guys trying to reenact the latest thing they saw on a porn video that looked interesting. Exactly. Same thing. Same concept. All right. This is how it looked in the porn. This is how I'm going to do it. It's just, it's not focused on her. It's not focused Boom. on her. Then you just hit it right there. Uh, no pun intended. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> I loved it. guys, the other thing guys do that really bores women to tears is, is focus only on their own enjoyment and stay yeah. in their own head and not even worry about giving her orgasms. It's almost like uh, a combination, weirdly, of them being so in their head that they're trying not to mess up and then forgetting right. she's even there. You know, right. it's not even necessarily uh, this incredibly narcissistic problem, although it can be. Sometimes it's just a simply lack of presence. Yeah. Yeah, lack of presence. You know, I, I sat a boyfriend of mine down once and I was like, you know what? One of these days our sex is going to get boring. That's just the reality of, you know, getting deeper into a relationship, getting more comfortable. Um, and he goes, 
oh, don't worry. I don't have boring sex. <laughs> I was like, what? And he was like, I have a good time every time. And I was like, first of all, it takes two people to have boring sex. I was like, and that is an extremely narcissistic thing to think that because you have good sex, that's good sex. It reminds me of a comedy bit I saw one time from some British show where it's like, what? Why are you stopping? Why are we stopping sex? It's like, she was like, well, I'm done. He's like, but I'm not. He's like, well, I am. <laughs> and she's got up and left. Oh, my God. That's a, that, both of them. Both of them are extremely disconnected. Right on, right on. Okay, well, this has gone far enough. Lest we traipse into ways that are going to get us in trouble with the law, I'm going to go ahead and tell these guys a little bit about your newest program because it's exciting okay. and it's cool because you're exciting and cool. So uh, you. I'll tell you what, you tell us what it's about. What's the name of it? What's it about? Okay, it's called Speak to Spark Arousal, and it basically encompasses just about everything we talked about here today in regards to creating connections, lasting connections, engaging women in ways that makes us want you, aside from any other person on this planet, aside from you know our friends and family that we have in our lives, aside from any other man that comes into the picture, in a way that engages her at her emotional core. Well, that's not only powerful, that's actually a unique hook on that. Definitely. Right. So, guys, you definitely want to check that out. Find out more about Jessica J. See what she looks like and all of her perkiness. And uh, get your hands on this program. And in order to do that, I've set up a special URL for you. And that's, as always, www.mountaintoppodcast.com, front slash Jessica, J-E-S-S-I-C-A. That's front slash Jessica. And uh, what a great conversation. Lots of fun, like I knew it would be. I mean, it was the first time, too. And uh, the second <laughs> time's better, of course. Always a good time, Scott. And if you guys have not gotten in on my newsletter yet, please go to www.mountaintoppodcast and absolutely sign up for that. You'll get actionable advice every day to help you be a better man and get better with women. Also, you can go to mountaintoppodcast.com front slash coaching and find out about how I and Emily and our whole team of experts can help you be a better man and can help you get the results you've always wanted with women. Guys, it is within your reach. You can do this. If I can do this, you can do this. So definitely go to mountaintoppodcast.com front slash coaching and get all the info there. Until I talk to you again real soon, this is Scott McKay from San Antonio, Texas. Be good out there. The Mountaintop Podcast is copyright 2016 by X and Y Communications. All rights reserved worldwide. Be sure to visit www.mountaintoppodcast.com for show notes. And while you're there, sign up for the X and Y Communications newsletter. This is Ed Roy Odom speaking for the Mountaintop Podcast. <laughs>